everybody doing today? Thank you for coming to the football game. Woo! Touchdown! Now that I have your attention, ladies, this is especially for you. You get tired of every year when your husband's mistress or your boyfriend's mistress <laughs> comes into town and your husband totally ignores you. Well, I'm going to show you today how to look that mistress in the face and let her know you don't mind her, don't you? But you are the queen of your castle and you run things in your castle. Every year, you sit by idly and do nothing when your husband's mistress comes into town. You try everything you can to get his attention, but she keeps pulling him away from you, and you don't know what to do. I'm a 41-year-old avid football fan. My favorite team is the All-American Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> I've been a Cowboy fan since 1973. My family is from East Texas, so since I was three, I've been a Cowboys fan. And I grew up being a faithful fan. I can remember being a little girl and watching my grandfather and my uncles watching the game and cheering and some grunts here and there. And I got involved in the excitement and I said, I'm going to be a Dallas Cowboy fan until the day that I die. And at 41, I still am one. And hopefully for the next 40 years, I will still be one. As I got older and eventually got married, I realized that men didn't think that it was appropriate for women to be football fans, let alone fanatics. I felt left out. I felt lonely. Something to feel lonely when your husband's mistress comes into town and he pays you no attention. You try everything you can, he still pays you no attention. His eyes are planted on his mistress. What did I do? I got even. They said, if you can't beat them, join them. So I was determined to get my husband's attention. So I'm going to share with you today a few things that I did to get over the obstacles and deal with my husband's mistress's yearly visits. First, we all know a way to a man's heart, or most men's heart, is food. Men like to eat during football games. Men love hot wings. They love soda. Some of them love brewskis. So fix your man's favorite hot wings, hot, spicy, mild, Cajun, whatever he likes. Fix it. Make sure he has brewskis in the fridge. Make sure he has sodas, chips, and everything he needs so he doesn't have to get up and go find something to eat during a football game. Next, women, you'll want to brush up on your football 101. You don't have to know everything there is to know about football offhand. Just learn a few simple plays to show him that you are interested in the game and that he can share that experience with you. Therefore, you've got one in on mistress. First play I'm going to teach you is a first down. A first down is when the offensive team runs for 10 yards, they get a first down. And they keep that up. They go first, second, third, fourth down. If they go another 10 yards, they get another first down. First downs are good. The next term is a touchdown. Believe it or not, I have a conversation recently with someone who didn't know what a touchdown was. <laughs> I thought she was joking, but she played it off very well. For those of you who don't know what a touchdown is, a touchdown is when a quarterback of the offensive team, like Tony Romo, throws a football to his offensive receiver or equal player, offensive player on the field, and that person takes the ball <clears throat> and they run it to the end of the field, the one that has that 
yellow long stick with the, looks like a wife, the yellow. They run towards the end there, and they make a touchdown. Okay, the next play is a, is a field goal. A field goal is once the player has run to the end zone and made a touchdown, the kicker comes out on the field for the offensive team, and he kicks <clears> the ball <throat> in between <laughs> those yellow lines. Another instance of a, a field goal is when, let's say a team, they can't make a play after three downs. They want to try to get some points on the board, so they'll kick a field goal, and they'll get three points if they make it. The, another uh, play would be a sack. That's when my dear Tony Romo is getting ready to throw the ball to one of his players, and someone sacks him before he can release the ball. That's not good for the offensive team. And the last play that I'll mention is an interception. An interception is, unfortunately, when my guy, Tony Romo, throws the ball to Austin Miles, but Austin Miles misses the ball, and the defensive team catches it, and in some cases, runs back the other way for a touchdown. Therefore, the offensive team has lost out. Now, I've given you about five simple ways or five simple plays that you can learn in, in the beginning to banter with your husband about during the football game. Now I'm going to talk about team spirit. Ladies, you may not know all about the football teams and so on. You hear what your husband has to say and so on. That's fine. Pick a team for whatever reason you can find. It may be that you like the colors of their uniform. It may be because their players are cute. <laughs> or it may be because you like their helmets. Whatever reason, find a team. Once you find a team, buy a jersey. I've got several. Get some paraphernalia. Did I say that right? <laughs> team paraphernalia and show some team spirit. In conclusion, I've covered ways to deal with your husband's mistress when she's in town. She's in town from late August until late January. Make sure you have your husband's favorite meal. Make sure you know how to talk football with him. Make sure you have your favorite jersey on. My husband is a Denver Broncos fan. I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, so you can imagine the banter in our house every Sunday. But it makes it fun, and he includes me in with activities with his mistress. Also, lastly, make sure you show team spirit. Don't be a bandwagon fan. Show your team spirit throughout the year. Root for your fan. And that's how you can defeat your husband's mistress during the football season. Thank you. <laughs>
Those things add value to a speech. That's what creates attention grabbers to anyone who is speaking. I also enjoyed that you had some notes in front of your own room. If you look carefully, for those of you that might have missed it, she had some memory joggers in a place where it didn't take away from her audience. So you prepared yourself ahead of time. I also liked that you were one of the speakers that also had your own intro. One of the biggest things I've learned in any speaking engagement is that you type up your own intro. So they can't bumble it up when they try to introduce you. You ever heard one of those, right? Where they just don't know anything about you and they're just making it up as they go along. So all these factors show that you are on your way to becoming a true professional speaker. Some areas of improvement that I wanted to cover quickly was the jargon that you used, which is football jargon. During your speech, you had all this great energy starting, but then it started going down a bit. And I know how that feels because it's almost like you put yourself a little too high, and then you're trying to come down, but you're not sure where to come down to. And then so when you got to the jargon in the middle of your speech about the football plays, we could tell that you had a little bit of unfamiliarity to it. You kind of forgot which one was this play, which one was that play, and so on and so forth. And that can take away from your particular speech because it doesn't look as confident. So you have to be careful to always try to memorize the hardest things that you're going to go through. To stretch yourself, you have to be ready for the recall. Then, of course, I liked the environment you were in, but you saw how I just moved this lectern out of the way? It can be your anchor if you get stuck on it. You want to be in control of your environment. So always make sure that if you don't really want this lectern, get it out of the way. As you can tell, I try to position it in an area where I can just glance over and I can see where I'm up to next. So you want to make sure you do that. Keep the energy even throughout the speech is always important. Or bring us up and then bring us down then bring us back up again. Those are key components. But overall, I could tell, Yolanda, and many of us could see that you stretched yourself. That's what Toastmasters is about. It's taking yourself to the next level, going to that uncomfortable zone so that you can actually grow. And that's what I appreciate the most. I can't wait till your next speech.